Hello and welcome to the Borough Breakdown podcast, the opposition show. In this episode, we'll be talking all things Borough against Ipswich ahead of Saturday's game. And I'm delighted to be joined by the goat of championship content <laughs> and a part of the Blue Monday podcast, Benjamin Bloom. Ben, how are you? Thanks for jumping on. I'm a bit conflicted because whenever you and I have talked, I've always been neutral but I don't know whether, you know, it's going to give a, get a bit confrontational now. Ipswich are, Ipswich are actually in the same division as Borough and they're actually mm. quite good as well. So we'll see where this takes us, Dana. Hopefully our friendship does not suffer as a result. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it won't. I was thinking that. We've spoken many times, but not about Ipswich. So this will be quite interesting. We'll get straight to it then. This season, obviously absolutely flying. As an Ipswich fan, how does it feel seeing your team second in the championship in the countdown to Christmas? It's it's surreal, really, because if you'd um if you kind of suggested this is what's gonna happen, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have believed you. I know you're a proper championship student and teams just don't go up from League One. Sometimes, you know, they'll they'll be competitive. We had Sunderland last year. That was an outlier. I think I did the numbers, Dana, and they were like the first team in eight seasons to even finish in the top half, let alone mm. the let alone the playoffs. Um, so no, it's just it's just bonkers, really. I I normally have my six to eight week rule for a promoted team, where like if you compare Ipswich to Borough, for example, where Borough essentially had to replace what they you tell me they're five the four or five of their best players mm-hmm. you get that yeah. you get that advantage if you don't have to do that but that's proven to be a, a bit of a bit of a myth and it does does look like it's just a very viable championship team um in terms of the pattern of play maybe not financially when you see who they're up <laughs> against but just absolutely brilliant and remember we have been rubbish for literally 15 years so <laughs> this is amazing yeah. thing <laughs> Yeah, you know what? To be fair to you, it, it is very different, isn't it, for a, for a team to come up? I mean, you were in League One for a long time, and and I didn't expect that. But you do see that with with teams like Derby, for example, Sunderland. They do go down, and, and Bolton, Wigan. There's so many examples of teams that go down and struggle. So the fact that you've come up and you're excelling the way that you are is crazy. And a man, at the, you know, the key figure of that is Kieran McKenna. How, you know, what does he mean to to Ipswich, given just how good you are right now? Um, you, you almost worry, you know, you see all oh, Stevie Cooper's on thin ice at Nottingham Forest mm. or, you know, where, wherever the first job's going to come up. Because you know what? I mean, it even happened with Carrick, didn't it, last season? He'd been in there a few yeah. months and everyone's like, oh, this guy's really good. Yeah, exactly. West Ham. And that job's up again at the end of the season, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, um, <laughs> that's not, that's not going to stop happening. On the surface of it, if you look at it logically, you have a team of, League One promoted players. You'll know about Sammy Morsey, who's got some championship mm-hmm. experience. Leif Davis is obviously very good, but it's a team of players that were bought in League One. So it's seemingly <laughs> blindingly obvious that this brilliant manager has put this pattern of play in, and that makes the that makes all the difference. So yeah, it, it's everyone says enjoy him while he's there because we think he's great and he's going to go on to bigger and better things than us and we wish him luck with that but you don't you don't have to worry about, mm. about what happens if he all of a sudden he's not there anymore I was a big big fan of Leaf Davis getting an assist for that Wes Burns goal at the weekend <laughs> by the way <laughs> Rafa is stacking up those stats at the end of the season um for people that, that you know that are listening and watching along that, that haven't watched you guys this season can you describe the Kira McKenna style of play for us um, so it's a four, two, three, one, and I know you're as big a nerd as me, so I'll go into detail. <laughs> it's like a lopsided four, two, three, one. So Broadhead and Davis can disproportionately get forward on the left, which then everything moves around. And to be mm-hmm. fair, there is then a big hole kind of down the right, which leads um figured out before they played us. Um and the ball, you, you know, you mentioned the Wes Burns goal. And it's great that they've finally scored one of these where everything <laughs> comes together. I'm being really snotty about this because I know you're a purist <laughs> as well. There's been a couple where they've passed it out from the back and an opposition player has just got a nick on the ball halfway through the move. And it doesn't count, does mm. it? It's got to go mm. it's got to go from back to front with nobody touching yep. it. And 
Um, but yeah, they play through the third, so they'll recycle the ball around the back to try and um, try and find either the switcher play or the pocket for the pocket for Broadhead, or it's the ball straight down the right for Burns. So they're, they're different kind of angles of angles of attack. But um, dare I say, Carrick's Middlesbrough last season, Carrick's Middlesbrough were a bit a bit faster and more vertical, weren't they? They would just mm. rip. Um, the Akpom Archer <laughs> Ramsey thing, um, but we've we've seen <laughs> elements of elements of that. Really good to watch. Keeper pinging it around in his own box. We haven't conceded that goal yet, where we give it away in our own eighteen yard oh, box. We are. And, I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, Huddersfield I'm, in the cup, so it doesn't count. We'll ignore it. Oh, there you go. I'm looking forward to the reaction of the twenty year season ticket holders to, to that. They're not <laughs> they're not gonna be too happy with that. But it's it's really, really great. A little bit different away from home, I have to say. They've been proper gung ho at Portman Road and there's just been goals, goals, goals there. But little bit little bit tighter away from home, which I hope is deliberate and I hope comes into what we're about to discuss as it pertains to facing you guys at the weekend. That's interesting, actually, because Borough are very, you know, we're good at home, but not so good away. And there has been a few calls of tightening it up a little bit on the road. We've conceded three um, away from home in our last three away games. So, yeah, there's, there's, you're probably a little bit more refined then, I would say, maybe. Would you agree with that? Um, potentially. So my, my brain's just gone to something I looked at today. Can I just ask, can I just ask you? I was looking at the... Um... <laughs> Wasting the hours of my day today. Apparently, Borough <laughs> scored sixty-seven percent of their goals in the second half. Is that right? Yes, we are why, a very. Why is, why is that? I don't know. To be honest, I looked at the first half table and the second half table like a week or so ago. We were actually bottom in terms of points, not right. accumulated, but you know what I mean. Like yeah. first half form, um, yeah, in the first forty-five, and then we were second behind Leicester in the second half. So there is a massive difference, there, a massive contrast in first half and second half. Don't know what it is, but under Carrick, we've always been very, very potent in that second half. So that's potentially one thing to look out for on Saturday. Um, you know, you, you spoke there quite a lot about your strengths, which leads me on to the flip side. What are the key weaknesses that you've noticed of Ipswich that Borough might just target on Saturday? Um, I mean, I guess how how open they've been and the fact that they, you, you, everyone knows what they're going to do now. Everyone's got the data and the videos of going yeah. back into, they were doing it in League One last season, the, the patterns of play and all of that. So um, whether that's a good or bad thing, being such a such a known quantity, there's always this thing as well of, Teams getting found out in the second half of the season and the cream, the cream rising as well. So we'll see mm -hmm. if that happens to that happens to us. Um, George Hurst has to do a lot of work. He's pretty much going to have to do all the running unless we sign a striker in January. So I guess he's going to get knackered at some point. Massimo Luongo is suspended, who you know about mm -hmm. as well. Um, and you're probably wondering why is he a first choice championship player, but he. <laughs> he is. He's been, he's been brilliant for us. Um, and um, Brendan Williams is going to be out at right. Uh, I'll just have him over Harry Clark as the first choice um, right back. Um, I guess the, I guess complacency and the stunning run has to end at some point. Otherwise, the way the way West Brom beat us, which is frankly not what you're going to do because we know how Carrick works, yeah. is they sat on halfway and. Pressed and you know what mm. like did it did it oh, really yeah. clever yeah. and yeah beat us fairly handily actually like that but we know should be a really damn good game there shouldn't it nil nil <laughs> we'll cancel <laughs> each other out won't we you know it is going to be interesting though Ben because we are two quite expansive sides and we, we all want those advantages in the attacking areas of the pitch so it's, it's going to be very very interesting obviously we have many injuries and suspensions I think we're a goalkeeper short of having a full 11 out injured and suspended so somebody actually so, asked when I said who are the who are the real key absences then McGree although we've you know we've we, you know we've had uh, McGree out for quite a while now and we've been okay without him. Fry McNair, I think it's mainly the players that have essentially created this domino effect. So now we have a situation where we've got no right back because Dyke's still suspended and Jones is suspended. We technically have Jones Rams is suspended. Vandenberg. 
He goes, yeah, he picked up his fifth Tremendous. yellow card against Leeds. <laughs> I love <laughs> Jones. <laughs> and you know what? I think it was the final game before the cut-off as well, so that was quite was annoying. But yeah, it's just this domino effect where Rav Vandenberg is technically our only right-back, but he's playing centre-back because we don't have the, the depth or the options at, at, at centre-half. So, oh, bloody hell, Ben. Someone actually asked, can you play right-back for us on Saturday? <laughs> so, I, give you I the would right be to delighted <laughs> to play right-back for you and be absolutely <laughs> terrible and hand um, have my hand in, a, in an Ipswich victory. But do you, do you think there's going to be something with McKenna and Carrick and having been together at... Man United, that's going to be, they're going to, and they're oh, both kind of yeah. studious, quiet blokes. They're both going to want to, I hope they don't fall over themselves trying to be too clever to outwit mm. the other, which sometimes you see happening. But I'm just really looking forward to that battle as well. Yeah, that's the media narrative of ahead of the game, isn't it, really? But um, I just wanted to touch on a player and two actually that you spoke about briefly there Massimo Luongo and, and Sam Morsi two former world players Luongo didn't make an appearance for us he was there and then gone like that Grandpa Simpson meme um, how have them two been in the middle of the park for, for you guys? So good it's not even funny honestly and um, <laughs> and again you'll be thinking they. I mean Morsi was alright for Borough Morsi was, wasn't he? was alright yeah well, and I'm going to say that because he was a part of the Borough Breakdown podcast at one point as well. Not a host, but a guest. Oh, amazing. Um, but I think Warnock was doing his trading thing, wasn't he? Where he just mm. he just likes things to be really fresh and he Yeah. I don't I don't I think with Warnock sometimes he's not bothered whether the players are any better. He just likes new toys and new players. And I think mm. Morsi suffered a little bit from that and they got a good offer. Look, I, I think they benefit from the pattern of play and the manager being absolutely superb. And you know that um, Morsi's a bit of a S-house, isn't he? So you need that <laughs> You need that um, kind of nastiness in your team. But essentially, if you play central midfield in the Kieran McKenna team, a lot of the fun is revolving around you. You just have to make yourself mm. available um, to help the others find the pockets and the switches of play and whatnot. Um, but Morsi's been really really good I mean we have these conversations each week on the Blue Monday podcast about oh who's the most vital player and we've literally gone through the entire team now about being vital <laughs> but Morsi is genuine excuse me generally the one um and and it is a, I was surprised he dropped down the division and mm -hmm. frankly he came he came for Paul Cook um who was the previous manager who'd had him at had him at Wigan and a you know we were a relatively wealthy um sort of league one team but I think this is probably his peak isn't it I don't think he's operated as a top six championship player Morsi so mm -hmm. yeah um they've both both been absolutely superb honestly Morsi is on our shithouse island a little furniture part of our podcast so yeah you, you're absolutely bang on there give us a player to to look out for in this game then you mentioned there is quite a few can you highlight maybe a couple that Borough fans should maybe be wary of or look out for yeah, um, it's it's tricky because it's a three-game week and it's Norwich at the end of the week. We don't exactly know mm. how he's gonna how he's gonna play it across the three games. Um, obviously, Luongo's not going to be there and Williams is not going to be there. So, Clagkey, Clark could be Wolfenden and could be two and Xavier. I don't know what will happen. Definitely Leif Davis, obviously. Definitely Morsi with Jack Taylor. Um, Possibly Broadhead, but Broadhead's uh, like a sixty-minute. He'd he'd be the guy. He's the he's kind of the match winner. He's the one that can you know pull a pass out of his backside to split a defence or smash a twenty-five yarder in or something like something like that. It's a really difficult one because, like you were saying, I don't know where the space is going to be. I don't know how they're going to try and outwit each other. Um, I assume Wes Burns is going to be double marked for the next three months after that goal he <laughs> scored the other day. So I'll say Nathan Broadhead, Dana, but he might not start. I the, mm. He has rotated in the in the three-game weeks and we've all gone, oh, you want to, you want to take out those players and then we've gone and won. So um, I'll, I'll say Broadhead um, on the basis everyone knows about um, Davis with the big caveat for all of your listeners who go, oh, what does he know? He didn't even start. That he might not start. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, someone that you, I don't think you mentioned there, Connor Chaplin, uh, 11 mm. goal contributions in, in 19 games this season, 29 goals last season, joint goal and boot. He's someone that previously at Barnsley, I've always thought has the potential to just perform a little bit more, a little bit better, be a bit more present in the goal scoring charts than he has been. What has clicked for him at Ipswich? Um, well, last season he played in a team that scored 101 goals and like created, that helps. About, created about three <laughs> XG every single game. And his job basically <laughs> is to stand on the edge of the box and receive the cutbacks. He's the he's the he's mm. the best finisher in the team. Always finds the bottom well, nine times. Wait for him to miss one one v one now at the weekend. Nine times out of ten, <laughs> he finds the bottom corner early. Um, I do agree with you. There's um. Yeah, this, I don't know. I don't want to be that guy who says, oh, the physicality and he's too small and whatnot. And if he was more of a physical specimen or whatever, I did. Do you know, I went and watched Luton Arsenal in midweek and I did have that moment of, yeah, all of these guys can play. They can all run. They're all massive as well. And you realise <laughs> what the top level footballer kind of kind of looks like. But yeah, I know, I know what you're saying about the peak for the peak for Chaplin but yeah he's he's the finisher in the team and if he is given a chance and look out for it it's the build up the attack overload no cross to the back post cut back low shot and he scored like you say 29 or probably 20 of them were like that last season I just want to, before I get into predictions, I just want to ask you, because obviously you consume a lot of, of championship content with the championship check-in, et cetera. What are your thoughts on Borough this season under Carrick? I predicted Middlesbrough to finish second this season. Mate, so in, did I. <laughs> yeah, in July, before Akpom had gone, and I thought, I thought they might have a chance to get Archer back, but obviously when a Premier League club bids 20 million. And... I love the way they played last season and Burnley were great, weren't they? And Sheffield United were kind of all right with a with mm. parachute payments and were good they were at like home. good enough. Yeah, yeah, good enough, exactly. Yeah. They were uh, my parenting style, frankly, yeah. Um, <laughs> they, were, they were good enough, <laughs> good, good at home um, and good defensively. So I really, I really loved Borough last season and unfortunately you had a wily old defensive Coventry team with two really good players in the team that did a number in the playoffs. And if they get to the final, pro probably win the final, don't they, on the big, mm -hmm. you know, Akpom and Archer and Ramsey. I'm sorry, I'm, you know, I can see your faces just um, turn, <laughs> turn sour at the... It's the mention the of members. Wembley. It's the oh, mention sorry. of Wembley, Ben. Yeah. And it was against Norwich as well, so you won't like it either. Oh, well, in 14... Well, we lost in the semi-final, didn't we, to him? In 14, oh, yeah, you did, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Great season. Um, horrible. Yeah. Uh we were top at Christmas, <laughs> top at Christmas and signed nobody. Um, so I was just a bit bewildered at the bad start because um, and I remember listening to your podcast on, on my dog walks in the summer, and the guy would come on and go, just pain, pain, you know. And then <laughs> there was a you guys were very kind of self-aware as you are on your show, that you can't just sit there and say, Oh, we're unlucky, or oh, the numbers are this way, there was an element of that, wasn't there, where you were, I mean, I think still in the XG table, you're massively high. So mm -hmm. I I really trust Carrick. Um, and yeah, it is. I mean, we had a season in the early, you know, 2003, four or something, where we'd had Darren Bench, Chef Kikuki and Tommy Miller. And they'd like scored 50 goals between them. And they all got sold. And Sometimes you think it's terrible analysis to say, oh, 50 goals come out of the team or whatever. But it's kind of hard to replace. And Ryan Giles um, as well was on the bench for Luton the other the other night when I was there. And um, so I'm not surprised it was tough. I didn't think you'd start as badly as you did. I'm not surprised you went like nine wins for 11 um, recently. It just looks... It's a lot to do, isn't it? Because the top four... They've got three year one parachute teams in and we've got a ridiculously high points total that will be quite hard. We'd have to be so bad now, you know, like 16th place form for the rest of the season to not finish in the top six. And West Brom are good. And then I think it might help you that Sunderland has just got shot of Mowbray. That might that might take them out of the picture if they don't make the right high. I think Hull are good, but I think you're good. 
but but it looks like there's only one playoff place. But I wouldn't be at all surprised if if you were if you were sixth or or fifth in the end. What what what's your take on that? I think for the past couple of weeks, I've thought that we're more a seventh place team. There's a few of them, and Hull were one that you mentioned, where they're kind of a little bit behind in a way. They need further development. And I see that with us because <clears throat> we've got a young team. You know, we brought in players from overseas that just need that time to develop. And I know that it's something that people throw out quite often or oh, you need time, you need to be patient. No, it's true. But I it's think. True. Yeah, as, as you mentioned, you know, you get rid of Archer, you get rid of Ramsey, you get rid of Atpom, Giles. They're big, big players for you. And you're going to feel that hangover the following season when they're not there and you inevitably have a little bit of a slump. Like, it's just going to happen. So I think we'll be, obviously, up there. We'll try to get into the top six. But I can just envision us just missing out, unfortunately, which it is what it is. We'll go next season, you know. It's football. I think I I agree with what you say. I'd add in about Hull. There's a chance that um, I'm just looking at Philogene. And sometimes when you have a player in the championship who looks way good for the level and they're an attacking player, sometimes they can kind of carry the carry the team a little bit. So that might that might work. Although Jack Clark could do that for. um, for Sunderland as well, couldn't he? But um, just, sorry, I know you're, I'm not supposed to be asking you questions. Um, what about um, Latte Lap? How's that? How's that working out? Is that trending up the way you thought it would? You know what the thing is with him, he's very Darwin Nunez, and I've said this on our podcast where he causes chaos. He's very good with his movement. He's pacey, but he's almost too quick for his own good. And I think he's quite erratic. He needs refinement. The fact that he's got six goals is good, and I'm you know. I can't complain with that, but he has missed a few chances where I thought he could have done better. He missed an, a free header um, at the weekend against Leeds. So there's there's good to like a laugh, but he just needs that again, that time to really be embedded into this, probably this country. He doesn't speak a lick of English, I don't think. And I, yeah, I just think he needs that time. But it's interesting with him because, as I said, he's chaotic and he's fun. He looks a player, doesn't he? he? Yeah, he definitely fits in with the theme of Carrick'sborough being fun, but it's just, yeah, it's that finishing element. It It is very, very erratic. Um, we'll move on just a, a slightly to score predictions, the fun part of the podcast where we all try to predict the future. Um, I will say that I did predict the Leeds game spot on. I said 3-2 to Leeds. So you know ben, I said 3-3, three, 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 I said. Yeah, you were close, weren't you? It, to and be then, fair, it was probably one of those games where it was going to be high scoring. So, And the amount of times I go first on the championship checking show and then Sam Parkin, supposedly the expert, alters his score based on mine and then gets it correct. <laughs> it's like um, Leif Davis assisting the West Burns goal, isn't it? I'm, I am responsible for, for this action. <laughs> so did Sam go for 3-2? To he Leeds? went 3-2, yeah, because I went 3-3. Pathetic. <laughs> Absolute shit how Sam Parkin. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Ben, what is your prediction for the game on Saturday? So my theory is that Ipswich skew better first half and Borough skew better second half. So I've got that logic. So bet on the opposite of this if you're a Borough breakdown listener. I've got the logic <laughs> that Ipswich will take the lead in some way, shape or form and Borough will peg them back and we'll all end up level at the end so it'd be I mean you joked and you said nil nil if it's a nil nil it's a nil nil <laughs> with 25 shots in it isn't it I think you know yeah you know probably. you know it's going that way but let's go for a silly fun Desmond and the great thing about this is I do so many of these shows I can do like four or five different predictions during the week and then just clip out the one that I'm the one that I'm closest <laughs> to but Dana our week man we've got Watford away on Tuesday and then Norwich at the weekend so if you give me a draw in the two away games and any kind of win in any way, shape or form against Norwich, I will I will take it. Yeah, I was thinking, because I think our styles are pretty similar in the way that we approach games, I do feel like we might cancel each other out. Now, I still think that both teams will score. I said, oh, I went to say 1-0 on our podcast, but then we concede and we do like to concede. It's just a trend of ours. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't see us keeping a clean sheet. So I actually went with with one all. I wouldn't be surprised if um, it is a draw. But 
to people that are listening, drop your predictions in the comments. We'll see if anyone gets it right. I said before the game, preferably. I get so many comments about predictions <laughs> after the games happen. It's like, really? <laughs> Come on now. Put your neck on the floor like we are here. Oh, you must get that a lot in your comments, though, Ben. You must yeah. be used to it now. Yeah, but look how oversensitive I am. <laughs> I'm, ne I'm never going to get used to it, isn't it? True. Anyway, thank you very much, Ben, for, for joining me. Um, where can people find you and where can people find Blue Monday as well? Yeah, so um, when's this going out, Dana? Because we might have to do some um, space time continuing this, stuff. This evening. Probably oh, okay. Evening, so yeah. Blue Monday <laughs> is previewing the Borough game. Um, we're recording on Thursday around six o'clock. They'll be previewing it at eight o'clock. So do jump on if you're a Borough fan. We'd love to love to get your input there. And on Sunday, I'm not hosting, but it will be 8 p.m. We'll be reviewing the game. Love to get um opposition um you know kind of input on how it's gone there so do go and join on the blue monday show and mine is the benjamin bloom football channel so like um i'll do a review on monday probably this week and we'll speak about this game a bit but yeah i i would say it well worth subscribing for all of your championship needs there's that voice there that you do. Your, your good old YouTube voice there. I need is to that the promo that, voice? That's, yes, that is it. Yeah. That's the promo voice. Yeah, you've it makes me sound dis distrustworthy <laughs> there. I have, I, have, I have a selling voice and a, and a talking voice. But what I will say, massive fan of your, um, your show, guys. There's so many shows, oh, and you. I don't mind it, where they're really, really partisan. And what I do like about your show is, if you're crap, no excuses, being crap. <laughs> If you win, you know, it's not, oh, we are the second coming of Barcelona 2009. We were good and you, you call it how it is. So, yeah, big, big fan of your show. And I wish more YouTube content and podcast content was kind of as balanced and able to view the opposition as yours is. So I thought I should say that, even though your listeners all know that already. Oh, thank you, Ben. Listeners, I did not tell him to say that, by the way. It was completely on him. <laughs> well, Ben, thank if you. If you haven't realised so I won't shut up now by this by this point <laughs> in the show, then, um, then God, I, I don't know when you will. Sorry, Dana, go on. Yeah, let me do my outro, mate. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for, for joining us, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> to the listeners, thank you very much for joining us as well. We'll be back on Sunday to review the game. Hopefully, it's a Borough win. But that was all of your opposition match day chatter in AirPod. Up the Borough Breakdown. <laughs>